Hello, listeners, and welcome to this, the 13th episode of the Heresy Accountability Buddies podcast. I'm Jacob, and I'm joined by... Duncan. Jack. Jack, your circle's lighting up green, but we're not getting any sound I through. said a thing. My internet's being really screwy. Well, that's just fantastic. <laughs> we're going to have a great show that's here. It's, a, it's an unfortunate yeah. thing that I deleted Lucky all 13. the previous recording. <laughs> Because, like, how great a cold oh. open would this be? Like, no intro music, no nothing, just live spiking the disaster that is us trying to start recording. Um, I, I guess uh, we will try this again from the top. Hello, listeners, and welcome. I'm Jacob, and for this, our 13th episode of the Heresy Accountability Buddies podcast, we're going to try this intro a third time. I'm joined by... Duncan. John. (laughs) Jack, we've got your greens. (laughs) I swear to God, I'm just going to call Jack on the phone and put it on speaker so he can hear us. No, no, it roll. it's it's so much better like this. I I can't even imagine how much better it could be than what we're doing right now. Uh, we we are thirteen episodes in and we've now peaked. Uh, content mm-hmm. does not get better from here. Hi, listeners. Jacob here. If you couldn't tell just by looking at our episode title, this is not episode thirteen, despite the fact that I referred to it as episode thirteen three separate times while trying to set this up. I didn't realize this until I went to save this episode for recording. Math is hard sometimes. Um, and, uh, we're actually joined by, uh, a special guest this time. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself, special guest? Special guest is banished somehow? No, he's, he's, that, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's okay. That's He's okay. Ready. He'll he'll come out of his shell when he's ready. Uh, in the meantime, uh, are we ready to talk about some hobby progress, gentlemen? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, let's do it. What's everybody been up to in the last week? Uh, oh, we've lost our special guest. That's unfortunate. Oh, he's back now. So yeah, I um, hobby wise, I managed to get all of the jet bikes decaled. So each jet bike has ten decals uh, on each side. There is um, a checkerboard on the wings and an Ultima on the front of the fuselage, a 13 beside that, and then there's a squad number on the back and a unit marking on the back as well. So I can make sure to differentiate each unit on the tabletop. Uh, and I managed to get all 40 of those jet bikes done, and then I managed to get uh, those then sealed so that I can currently doing uh, spot colors in a hotel room while I'm in San Antonio for work. And I also managed to get all the spot colors down on all of the infantry and all of the riders. And I also managed to get all of the chip weathering done on the jet bikes and riders and infantry as well. So that has been me for the last uh, week and a half. I also managed to play a couple of games. So I played in one of Michael's events. And uh, in Houston, we were going to have an event and we're just going to turn it into a games day. And then I also played in... Uh, Our second league day here in Dallas, we went up to, excuse me, a thousand points uh, for our league day, and I played uh, a neat little couple couple games of a thousand points. Very cool. You've been up to a lot. Yeah, just a smidge. I mean, I figured if we're going to start recording the thirteenth episode, and you know, the thirteenth legion needed to have a good showing. Can't record an intro. We can do copy. Yeah, that's that's very true. That's very true. Uh, other than the fact that you know, uh, this now marks uh, thirteen episodes where I believe we've had an ultramarine uh, present for all of them, uh, which is more than the heresy timeline can say. Oh, I like that. I really like that statement. You know, just because Horace was scared of us and he kicked us out and he kept us out with his big giant space cancer, um, doesn't mean that we're not still the best legion. You know, we wrote a big book. It was so good. Everybody followed it for the next uh, 20,000 years or so. You wrote a book so good that you had to threaten Dorn with excommunication in order to get him to read it? And you still couldn't make the Space Wolves read it? Yeah, That's Dorn, what, hang on, hang Dorn on. threatened his own son with excommunication. Let's be fair here. The Space Wolves didn't read it because they can't read. Oh, I know, but I'm I just mean, saying, like, how good a book it was for... can it be if you're advertising it as everybody read it and you couldn't, like, it's not good enough to, like, 
make people read. The Pokemon games are good enough that they compel people to read. Codex Astartes, none of that. Now, now... It's no, a uh, war dream. Russ, it's not a kid's game. Russ was ripping out pages and using it to cover up piles of poop in the in the et. So yeah. he was Did busy. He house training a base wolf. I'm sure he needed a lot of pages, and it's a big book. It big is. Book. Luckily, my forces didn't bother reading it because you know we were all stuck in the eye. Meanwhile, like the Iron Hands are just like, well, we tried reading this, and it had nothing to do about telling us how to defeat dinosaurs. So uh, here we are, stuck on Pythos, losing. We just avoid talking about that book, honestly, because it was terrible. Hey, listen, okay, if I'm allowed to salt the wound for Ultramarines, and I have to deal with the fact that, like, Alpha Legion Primarchs are the heresy equivalent of Eldar Avatars, like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna rub some salt and some other wounds here and there. Go right ahead. Uh, um, Jack or Duncan, you have any hobby progress to report? After you, Jack, you've got some. Um... I put together um, a couple of Land Raiders for the Sons of Horus. Um, luckily for people involved, they were not painted blue and slapped with a uh, Ultramarine decal. Uh, <laughs> but in all seriousness, I have uh, have my Nemesis Destroyer Squad almost to the point of being ready to weather. I have a Termite uh, that's ready to weather. I have the Ultramarine's uh, Praetorian Guard that are that's on my table right now. I have the uh, Locataris that's to put together and base coated. I have a Fulmentaris that is put together and base coated, uh, and I am working on the last of everything I need for Music City Heresy right now. Very cool. So, are you on track to take Sons of Horus to NashCon? Absolutely. <laughs> Very cool, <laughs> dude. That's what I'm trying to do. That's why I'm getting all these bikes painted right now is because I'm taking the bikes to NashCon. I will have started and finished three thousand points. Since January, or since basically January, that's my goal now: is to kick out an army for NashCon and an army for Adepticon. I think oh, if you take wow. into account all the crazy stuff that I've done since beginning of the year, I think I'm sitting on oh god, maybe six thousand points worth of Ultramarines. Yep, I've done since beginning of the year. Beautiful man, it's beautiful. That's one of the things that I was talking about. The guys at the, <laughs> the event that uh, I played with Michael, one of the guys came up and he's like, "I want to paint Imperial Fist, but you know, I." I just, I'm not good enough to paint in the heresy. And I said, look, you need to just stop thinking about all, oh, you're not good enough. I said, you know, you go around and look at, you can find plenty of tutorials online that you can push yourself to be better with every step. But, you know, just do a batch of Marines, just do 10 and figure out how you like it, figure out how it works. And I said, look, you know, the other important thing to remember is you're painting an army. Your favorite color needs to be done. It doesn't matter if it's perfect. It doesn't matter if it's got, you know, just the right amount of rubble on the base or you've got enough shades here or it's perfectly weathered. It just needs to be done. And when it's done, and the reason I say that is not just because quit being lazy, but because when you've actually finished the project, you're going to feel a lot better about it. And then you're going to go, okay, now I know what I need to push myself on to do the next project. And then now I know what I'm needing to do. Um, I'm not quite happy with that. I'm going to push the weathering just a little bit more on this army to move on and make it look a little bit better in this instance. So, you know, it, it just work towards done. That's, that's probably the best advice I can give anybody that wants to get in this hobby. Yeah, and that, that runs parallel to something that I, I think I brought up on the show before. I don't know if it was uh, a fever dream or if that was on the episode that uh, uh, we just kind of did as a, as a demo or, or as a mixtape kind of thing. Um, but uh, when I was at NashCon last year, uh, I ran into uh, the wonderful Jake Bussey uh, and his uh, Covenant of Fire Salamanders. Uh, and we got to talking and I was like, hey, you know, did did you get everything done for this list that you were hoping to get done? And he went, man, I got myself really badly worked up in a circle. Because he's like, I just picked up the clones and droids starter box for Star Wars Legion. And he's like, I knew I had NashCon kind of looming and waiting to come up. And he's like, I knew there were a couple models that I really wanted to get done for this army for the purposes of Mornival. But... I couldn't help myself but think, like, oh man, my heart is really in wanting to get those Legion models built and painted. But anytime I tried to do that, I couldn't keep myself on it because I knew that what needed to get done, like what had a due date on it, was my salamanders for NashCon. And he's like, so here we are, it's NashCon, 
and I have neither of those done to speak of. I think he, he ended up finally getting a little bit of the Legion done, uh, and uh, he he really uh, left me with with an impression that um, that that connected with me as far as like having ended up in that that knot myself as far as uh, when things are supposed to get done or who I'm accountable to getting them done for. Um, and, and just kind of being like, you know what, just whatever you have the inspiration to do, just do it. And then work on trying to push yourself towards the stuff that has, uh, due dates, but don't, don't hold yourself to that. The, the more important thing is that you keep having more stuff done, whether that's built, painted, whatever, today than what you had yesterday. Absolutely. I mean, like Shia LaBeouf says, just do it. I mean, very much so. Makes, makes sense. So, uh, my hobby progress this week, uh, unless you wanted to go, Duncan. Sure, I'll go. Um, my hobby progress since we last recorded was I had Jack build two Land Raider uh, Proteus for me, so that uh, from the Sons of Horus that I'm taking to Nashcon. Um, I've got them sprayed black, got that done today. I finished a uh, squad of um, the close combat tactical marine versions. Whose name is right now escaping me because I'm Reavers. an idiot. No, yes. not the Reavers. Not the Reavers. I haven't finished that squad yet. Um, the spoilers. Yeah, them. I finished that squad off. Uh, other than having their Vexilla done and their bases, I need to get those done. Uh, but I'm going to do all the bases for this whole army as one batch as a whole. So I just done so they're all uniform. Um, I finished a Master of Signal for the army. I finished a Chaplain for the army. I finished three. Apothecaries for the army. That's it. Oh, and I buried my best friend, other than Jack. That's uh, kind of eaten up a lot of my time the past week. So, there we go. Very cool. I'm uh, sorry for your loss, brother, but yeah, you know, we're here I know. For you. It's a good thing you got the hobby done because it allows you to unplug a bit. It did, and uh, that's one thing I really want to talk about. Um, sorry, if I'm going to get on a soapbox for a second. Um, one of the things that has really helped me get through is having this circle of friends that we've had here, uh, that we've had going on for a while. And being able to just sit and talk and message back and forth with some of the, the accountability buddies group. Um, Jack helped be a pallbearer for my friend, Holly. Um, he was there for the visitation. He's been there for me through all of it. And we've been close for years. And I think, unfortunately, this kind of drew us a little bit closer as well. Um, but <clears throat> make certain that in everything you do, no matter what it is, that you always know who you can reach out to. And count on when you're hurting because it helps. And this hobby, given how passionate all of us are about it, has really helped me a lot. Um, so I just want to say thank you to all my friends who have reached out to me. Um, I love y'all. That's all I got. We're glad we got to. Uh, even love if, you, uh, yeah, we wish circumstances would have made it so that we didn't have to. You know, the alternative being that uh, that we get to be there for somebody who's been there for so much of us. Thank you all. So, Jake, what'd you get done this week? Or since our last recording? Uh, since our last recording, uh, I got my list nailed down for Michigan. Uh, I thought I had it nailed down. I was wrong. Uh, mostly because uh, someone actually read the rules uh, and pointed out that no, not even in Orbital Assault can you uh, put Dreadnoughts into Charybdis and make that work. So uh, there was much weeping, lamenting, and otherwise gnashing of teeth as I... Uh, adjusted that and what I was doing for that, uh, as well as me pulling up the player's pack and seeing uh, that you needed to have both a 2,500 point list and a 3,000 point list. Um, so just trying to figure out how to how to reconfigure and reconstitute my list in a, in a form that would work for that. Uh, and then once that got squared away, uh, it became uh, a matter of I think I spent probably four or six hours uh, one night this week um, doing a mess of conversions, uh, taking a lot of models where I was like, oh, I really like this model, or I like how it came out of the box. Um, I have done a lot of like bits swaps in the past, but I have not done a lot of uh, conversions that have involved like cutting up nicer existing models because I'm like, ah, oh, no, that model is nice. If I cut it, it will be less nice. Um, so that was, that was a big jump for me, um, and the, the 
Upside, though, is that I was able to get probably one of one of my favorite models I've ever gotten to make. Uh, I took the Thousand Suns Cataphracty Praetor, and I swapped his uh, Combi Bolter for uh, a Tome. I had this, like, open resin book that somebody had given me. So I took... Um, Araman's right hand from the plastic kit, and I, I carved that out so that I could get that fitted into uh, where the Terminator's right hand would be, uh, slotted the book into his hand, and then uh, replaced his uh, left-handed Kopesh with a Thunderhammer, and I'm hoping to be able to use that model as a... Um, uh, a herald for my list, uh, knowing that that the Thousand Sons have spent a lot of time and a lot of resources tracking down books and tomes and knowledge uh, all across space, uh, to the point where that was that was one of their inciting incidents with the Space Wolves, is that uh, Magnus was like, "No, I'm not going to raise this library to the ground. We have to bring this world to compliance, but that doesn't mean we." take it to the torch and Lehman Russ was like no we absolutely take it to the torch I have no idea what's in that library but it's probably not congruent with imperial teachings so it's gotta go um to the point where Russ actually killed a few thousand sons and uh it was a mess um but that's that's my hope is to is to be able to use that model and I've got a couple other books and bits and bobs uh that I'm hoping to to eventually equip him with once that's all together or or to put on his base uh to have him used there. Uh in the meantime, I also had to uh get some Terminator war gear changed out both for my Sekhmet squad and for my um command squad. So this list previously uh for last edition of Heresy was built on the back of like one big Sekhmet squad in a Charybdis, and then two squads of Terminators in uh, Anvils. Uh, but that being said, I used Sekhmet bits for all of them, because I really wanted the, the headdress look there. Um, that radically changed with uh, the, the way Terminators are looking to shake up in the current edition. Uh, so not only did I change the war gear on them, because I had no Thunder Hammers on anybody, and it was a lot of Chain Fists, um, so I took about half the Chain Fists on all the Terminators, swapped them over to Thunder Hammers through use of the uh, Sekhmet left hand that's designed to hold that Kopesh, um, and... Uh, yeah, uh, took one of the, the Terminator models and converted him into a standard bearer for that command school. Uh, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with that as well. Um, maybe not perfect, but, but better than what I was thinking that was going to turn out. Uh, on the subject of events, and uh, before we get to uh, John's recollection of his event, uh, I think our special guest, if you'd like to introduce yourself, and we can talk a little bit about why you're here. Uh, yeah, so assuming that my internet doesn't uh, make the big doo-doo and, and turn into nothingness, uh, my name's Mike. Uh, I'm one of the event organizers for, uh, for an event you may have heard of called Warzone Houston, and it's pretty cool. Tell us a little bit about it, when, uh, when it's going to be, where it's going to be, and uh, what the event format's looking like. Yeah, I can, I can do a little bit of an info dump. Um, so Warzone Houston, basically, um, it, it's a long-running event. Um, and we've recently, in the last couple of years, expanded into a place called Sam Houston Race Park, so we can get a lot of people in. But but the Heresy event, that's that's why we're all here, so I'm not going to talk about anybody else. I'm just going to talk about that. The Heresy event is is getting bigger and bigger every year. Um, you know, last year we were at 60 people. This year we're at 80. We've got a great idea and a, a great plan for the event in its entirety. Um, we're looking for 3,000-point for frontline games, so... Basically, anything that is, you know, a full 6x4, that's what we call frontline. You're looking at 3,000 points. Um, as far as any sort of restrictions or anything like that, we are going to do list review. And then something that's coming out for the first time today, we are going to make a change to a, a very particular right of war. Um, and I fully understand that some people may be a little upset about this, but I really hope that they can understand why it's happening. We will be, for the purposes of Warzone, removing a line from Fury of the Ancients. Um, I know that that's not going to be like everybody's first pick of how they would handle that, but that was the best option we could come up with. The other options presented were things like to ban Fury of the Ancients. Um, doesn't really feel that great. Then again, playing against 
all of those contemptors doesn't feel so great, but we're going to, we're going to make that change. And then we're also, we're recommending that you only take a single talent of contemptor dreads. Um, if you've played any games of 2.0 so far, you know that contemptors can be a little rough. Um, John knows exactly how rough they can be because he took a football team and I took basically the, the PE staff into a, an APOC game. And I don't think we lost a single dread. No, we, um, we cleaned up a whole table of traders, uh, yeah. vehicles, heavy weapons, super heavies, Primarchs. Primarchs. Yeah. Didn't matter what, what was thrown at us. The only thing that I actually, I take that back. I lost one dreadnought because a Leviathan punched it to death. The only thing that stopped dreadnoughts were dreadnought. So unfortunately, you know, that'll be a change that we make. Um, but the, you know, we're also playing 1500 point ZM games and Centurion games. And for Centurion, we're just using the ZM force construction rules. Um, the Centurion rules for Mortable are great, but this makes it a little bit simpler. Um, other than that, we're, we're doing pretty good. We've got a schedule of events that's going to drop. We have some After Dark events coming this year, um, including we're going to pop over and, and dive deep into Trials of Escalon. Um, so the Trials of Escalon last year was uh, meant to be a 1v1 night joust with, with tilting lists, and they were all going to be played out over some really cool terrain that Jimbo Burrell made. And that terrain is the uh, it's the Astrodome terrain. And then we ended up doing 3v3s, and that just sort of worked better. So we're going to tilt back into that, and we're going to do another another great set of, of night jousts. And then off to the side, we're going to have armager lists. So if you want to take you know your crew of, of your armager and your buddy's armagers and fight those armagers, that'll be a thing. And then the prizes this year, we have a Knight Asheron and a, a Morax that will be painted up. And those will be the prizes for those events. And we've got some other stuff coming. Um, there's a new event coming this year called Pathway to Eternity. And it's going to be basically two ships passing alongside each other. So basically two ZM games played over a gap. That'll be pretty cool. But the, the event goes three days. We start on Friday with uh, with APOC. Cody McGarity runs an amazing APOC game. Um, if you've ever been to one of his APOCs, you know it's it's just fantastic. And then we're going to dive into a whole bunch of rounds of fun. We're working on, on really great swag bags like we had last year. Uh, we've got pint glasses coming again. Uh, Alan Bailey's going to cut those for us. We have a, a new vendor this year for coins and patches. Um, we're going to be using a vendor called Excalibur Industries. He does a lot of work for a lot of, uh, a lot of government needs. He handles a lot of the coin production for a lot of the, the special operations groups. And he's hit us with some really cool designs for the patch. It's going to be great. It's at the race park. The hotel deal is still active. I mean, we're, we're going to jam for, for three days. It's going to be open from 8 a.m. To, to midnight and everything in between. So, Do you have any spots left? I have, uh, I have some spots left, yeah. And there's, there's some hotel rooms left as well. I called and talked to them. There's still some rooms in the block. Um, if that hotel block uh, sells out, we absolutely will get a secondary hotel block somewhere else. Um, we've talked to them about expanding it. But it, this is the hotel you want to be in. This one's nice. But, yeah, there's some tickets left. Um, there's no real restrictions as far as what you can bring other than the one restriction to Fury. Um, bring your Primarchs to 3K. It's going to be great. We're doing the Siege of Terror for APOC, and that'll be what the narrative is for the entire event. And We're just going to roll hard and fast. And just like the T-shirts say, only the dice can stop us now. We're going to have a great time. We'd love for anybody and everybody to show up and play. Very exciting. Sounds like it's uh, going to be a winner. Sounds like a good event. Wish I could show up. Sadly, I won't be able to. Life sucks heart. sometimes. Sorry, brother. It's okay. My heart breaks. It's okay. One day. One day, my great bearded friend. Maybe uh, maybe next year at Adepticon. We'll see. Our our hugs shall be... It shall be legendary. Manly hugs. Very manly. Our beards will touch for a brief moment. Everyone else will know of our majesty. It'll be we'll amazing. Have to, we'll have to bring Jake Bussey in because he has the manliest of beards. Yeah, Jack's got the right idea. Yeah, he knows exactly what's going to happen. If Jake's there, oh, you know, if Jake's there and we hug like as a threesome, we might, that might be classified as like a, like an apocalyptic style event, you know? Yeah, well, I know that, the group of, that's flying way too close to the sun there. All we'll have to do at that point is bring in uh, Ryan Kimmel and we'll have a war crime level event right there. You know what? It's it's only a war crime the second time. So as long as we don't do it again, we should be fine. But you know what I've heard? I've heard if you bring Chris Pretty into these hugs, 
It doesn't turn into a war crime. The real Chris Pretty or the flat Chris Pretty. There's two. Well, so it Don't really doesn't matter which you powers. choose. Yeah, you can just go with either one. So you can do either one. But yeah, that's what we'll be doing. Sounds good to me. So it's it's interesting that you guys mentioned that you're you're doing list check. Um, and I I wanted to to bring this up, uh, and I think this is a this is a great adjacent way to do it. So we up to this point have been, or I shouldn't say up to this point, for the last couple of years have been doing a bring as many lists as you like type of thing mostly because we did away with the with the list check we didn't feel it was necessary and we felt the community was was self-policing obviously at at some level doing the bring as many lists as you like gets incredibly complicated for list check events uh and one of our locals has has pitched or has floated uh, the idea that we may have to, at least for a time, go back to list review single list events uh, just for the sake of, of trying to get or to promote uh, balanced list construction. Uh, given that there are some things out there in the game right now that are such hard counters to other things. Um, you've got Combat Air Patrol that we talked about, uh, and, and the ability for a relatively cheap hundred-some-odd point Xiphon to just smack any flyer out of the air, uh, and probably obliterate its contents in the process. Um, you've got things like the Vox Disruptor Array, uh, which can upend, uh, the ability for a drop pod-based or a deep strike-based army to play the game in a way that they planned to. Um, and, and that's something that's being bandied about, uh, obviously, or, or thankfully, um, we don't have to solve this immediately for the indie area, as we don't have, to my knowledge, any events immediately scheduled until what's probably going to be our narrative kickoff next year, February 10th through 12th at Indie GT. Uh, but I did at least want to open the floor for, for other folks to, to discuss and to weigh in. Speaking as someone who doesn't run any events currently, um, I'm not really hyped up on the idea of banning specific lists or styles from an event. I am, I really kind of like the idea of vetting lists to try to maintain the narrative rather than trying to force people to conform, but kind of like self-policing in a way. But uh, I'm not against kind of saying, hey, this is inappropriate in the current thing. But it also all depends once we have more books out there and can see what else is available that may be nasty or not because we don't know how uh solar ox is gonna look we don't know how the stuff are gonna look. we don't know how knights are gonna look we don't know how um custodies are gonna look we don't know how sisters are gonna look mechanicum we don't even have a clue i mean we just don't know yes there's stuff floating out there in the ether that people have been able to post and look at but that's all playtest one playtest two playtest three it's not the final version and until the final version of stuff drops i'm really kind of apprehensive about saying, this is good, this is bad, don't bring this to a game because you're going to be ostracized. And I don't like the idea of ostracizing anybody from the community when we have a brand new edition, brand new games, and stuff is still getting worked out and we haven't even gotten our first fact yet. Um, That's a good point. I mean, all yeah. that said, I don't object in any way, shape, or form to saying right now that Fury is bad and does not need to be on a table. Don't well, have any objection to that at all. And yeah, it's, yeah, it's not just Fury of the Ancients, though. Yeah, no, the, it's the not. Problem is the, the Dreadnoughts themselves. So we had a guy at our 1,000 this last weekend. He ran Fury at 1,000 points. It was a bit much, but the, that guy cleaned every table he went to. And then somebody else, you know, they'd been painting Dreadnoughts forever, so they decided to just run a couple Dreadnoughts in their 1,000-point list. And that was literally the thing doing the cleaning up in there. So it's not just the fact that Fury makes them line. I mean, that helps a lot. But I think what Michael did with removing line from the dreads um, helped a lot because it's forcing you to take other stuff in that list. So it's forcing you to not take as many dreadnoughts, hopefully. Well, you well, can take as many as you want. But yeah, if you want but you're not gonna objectives, score. you're going to have to change the way you do it a little bit. And, and I don't want anyone to think I don't want you to take dreadnoughts. I want you to take dreadnoughts. As somebody who owns 15 of them, I think they're great. But I think in the current state of 2.0 with no errata and with, quite honestly, 
to be a little critical radio silence on an errata. Yeah. It's a little tough right now. And, and I don't make, we don't make that decision lightly. This is a rough spot to put an event runner in because you're giving me no ammunition. It, it sucks. Yeah, to, to be out here completely flying blind and to, to have the capacity to look at a Dreadnought and realize that they are arguably more durable than a Primarch. Um, and uh, yeah, to, to be left going, okay, cool, I, I thought we found out that like the Thanatar was too much, but apparently now like Iron Hands just get to have tough eight Dreadnoughts. That's unfortunate i guess that's where we are here in the timeline um it may it's, offer a a look from the outside absolutely i've only gotten one game of of this new edition in so far because of work life and everything else so theoretically i may know what's good and bad but that's going upon years upon years upon years of playing this game outright banning stuff and anything else before we actually get everything on the table and people get games under their belt I just feel like it's going to leave a Bill Badsies in people's mouth before they even get started. That's, that, that's my concern. In life. Well, that's that's also why I said the, the intention isn't necessarily to ban anything. Um, I, I do applaud Michael for a relatively elegant solution as far as just removing line from Fury of the Ancients, not only because that, that squares that right a little bit better against uh, Armored Breakthrough in its current incarnation, uh, and I, I think that does a lot to kind of ease some of the, the woes of the Treadheads who've been playing up to this point, who are mm -hmm. left feeling like second-class citizens. Um, but but again, my, my point was, do you stay on the list check system rather than the bring as many lists as you want system in, in the hopes of, of once again kind of applying that hidden hand to the community in the name of balance? in the name of not banning these these very hard counter units outright um and and hoping hoping that that hidden hand can can influence people to healthier decision making and list construction it, and again i'd like to be very clear right it's not that i think it's bad it's not that i think it's good i think it doesn't promote a great play experience between two players for heresy, for, for me, and I feel like it's this way for a lot of the people that I interact with, the play experience is better for me than if I win or I lose the game. I don't care if John beats the dog snot out of me every time we play. If I have a good game and he has a good game, that's good enough for me. That's all I really want to put out there with list checks and things like that. 2.0, if you haven't played a lot of games, can seem really wonky. And it's really not. You just take some reps to really kind of see what's doing what, is my opinion. Anyhow. Yeah, and we're uh, it's it's been fascinating to be able to to talk with some of the other guys in in the uh, chat that we've got. As far as some people are are really seeing auto cannons develop in their meta games, uh, and what's been the case in indie has that those have been almost entirely absent. It's almost exclusively like melta guns, las cannons, uh, and dreadnoughts, uh, and and that's to my dismay at some level because it's like ah oh, cool we're just we're just picking the okay yep that's where we are right yeah there were some auto cannons at the thousand point event a couple players had them but i took the the five man volkite culvert squad and managed to get them to shoot five times by turn two bottom of turn two um i will tell you that, that uh 25 shots of those guys doesn't kind of matter what you point them at they they do some work. They were putting wounds on dreadnoughts. They were scything through Gal Vorbach, uh when the guy couldn't roll saves. Um, they were doing pretty good work. So twenty five shots is nothing to sneeze at. Uh, and to that end, we do have at least one player who is uh, rather adamantly requesting that reactions be clamped to each unit may only react once per turn uh, as a way to try to to limit the destructive capacity. Your Fulmentaris, your Siege Tyrants, your Laz Cannon Heavy Support Squad. Yep. Your 10-man Heavy Support Squad with Volkite uh, Culverins. Yeah, 10 would be great. This was only 5. But yeah, I shot them during my turn. I shot them when someone shot at me. I shot them when someone was silly enough to declare a charge against me. You just shoot and then shoot and then 
I don't know. We also came into an argument that I don't agree with necessarily that you can fury of the legion every time you shoot. I think that that should be a shooting phase only thing. But everyone's like, oh no, it's it's totally a whenever you shoot. So just do it during the reaction as well. Might as well throw more dice at it. Yep. Yep. Uh, and that's uh, I I have gotten uh, two games in now with uh, with my Alpha Legion. And I'm still definitely feeling kind of uh, like I'm still drunkenly stumbling around army composition with with that force. Uh, I can say relatively definitively, um, Larnaeans with a conversion beamer are not working out the way I wanted or hoped they would work out. Uh, and so Lernaeans are kind of back off the table for me, uh, which is very unfortunate. Um, but I, I just can't quite justify the expenditure of points on them uh, without feeling like they can realistically do anything. That I 100% agree. And it, Lernaeans feel bad right now for yeah. Alpha Leap. Yeah, you, you aren't truly Ballistics 5, which isn't the end of the world. You do have your Hydran Exemplars rule, um, but you're saddled with just the two-shot 15-inch Volkite gun. You're in Cataphracty armor, so you can't run. So how are you supposed to get in range to get that Volkite gun to work? And then once you get into that range, you still are in only Cataphracty armor. You're paying 15 points a model for Power Fists or 20 points a model for Chain Fists. You can't take thunder hammers, so you're basically saddled with these power axes on a on a unit that costs what 240 or 250 points up front. Um, and in the meantime, like since you're not truly weapon skill five, all it takes is one dreadnought or another unit of terminators to just come along and clobber you, and you're just like, great, cool, lovely. I spent the same amount on my elite terminators that you spent on yours. Uh, but all of my points went to giving them the line special rule and hoping that they will just pick on your troops' choices, which I don't have a realistic way to get them into combat to accomplish. I don't like the Larenins currently. Um, obviously, you don't either. I think they're one of the weaker Terminator choices, but I think, in a way, they're also kind of diametrically opposed to what you would normally think terminators should be doing you would normally assume terminators or terminator elites for various legions would be out there punching in the faces getting in close combat i don't see the learnings doing that in current edition i think giving them the uh, conversion beamer and sitting them on that backfield objective as a kind of really unpleasant uh uh porcupine for someone to land and deal with kind of makes them a little bit nastier i think that's really the only way to use them currently now if they get a tweak cool bring them up to something on par with uh say justarian or one of the various other type of terminators marvelous but i definitely see what you're feeling on that i think across the board there's a lot of stuff that needs tweaking and i'm not even talking about the stuff that's in the um in the legacy the, of dark age yeah i'm not even talking about legacy stuff i'm talking about just the stuff that's in the current uh liebers i think uh for example I think that uh, World Eaters Rampagers are a bit uh, too a bit good, much. a bit much in a way. Um, I think in some ways they're a, they, they need to have a points increase at the very least. Um, but that said, I also think there's other ones out there that don't make sense how they, with the rules they have, like the uh, Reavers for Sons of Horus, there's absolutely no reason for them to have uh, Relentless. They don't have any rapid fire weapons other than maybe a plasma gun if you buy that as a special weapon. I think Relentless is because they inherited that from Vets. That that would be my thought there, because you're you're two wounds, weapons five, you're in the elite slot. That that's my my thought, whether or not that, that means anything, but I don't know if it does or not. Um I'm honestly uncertain. Do I like the Reavers? Yeah, but I, I like the Reavers just because of the idea and the fluff. I don't really like the models that much and the rules kinda bite in some ways, but there's others out there that I think also need uh, help, as it were. Um, there's things I don't like about a lot of different Legion-specific units, and there's things I like about others, and I think some are overcosted. I think some are undercosted. I think a general rules tweak would be helpful, uh, especially, and I hate to say this, on some of the generic units. I think a way to help balance against the Dreadnought force that a lot of people are seeing and I have personally seen a couple times now, is to likely cut the max size of Talons down. Um, maybe even 
make it a zero one choice if you're going to have talons um and for not for in fury um but uh maybe if it's not going to be a zero one choice make it one to two or if it is a zero one have it cap at three as it is i don't think that having lots and lots of dreads is a bad thing because i love the dreadnought models i mean i've got piles of them in the house that i'm either have painted or need to get painted and there's others that need to get dealt with here in the house as well but i think right now dreads are in a bad place some of the legions themselves are in a bad place with their specific terminators and their individual units and it's just it seems a bit off as it were so uh something that one of our locals has has uh posited is the idea that uh you get one model with the dreadnought unit type per thousand points i think we discussed this in our group chat a while back i don't have a problem with that in theory um i have a problem with that in practice are you specifically meaning you get one dreadnought model or you get one dreadnought unit because if you get one dreadnought unit then you have here's a talon yeah the the idea would be single model the same sort of vein where like primarch is 25 percent of your points or lord of war is 25 percent of your points however like dreadnoughts are so cheap that you can't really limit them to 25 percent of your points and i don't know maybe maybe i'm speaking out of turn on that as somebody who's like trying to cover his butt because he's including a leviathan in a dreadnought drop pod at 3,000 points and then i'm uh, including the world's most expensive not-Leviathan Dreadnought at uh, the Osirian Dreadnought, uh, which by the time you take minor, psych on a, or minor psychic powers on him and a true psychic discipline, uh, and then you take, I think I'm just doing a palm-mounted Melta weapon and then the Gravis Melta on the left arm, uh, that Osirian Dreadnought is running me, I want to say, 275 or 285 points, uh, which is just 50 points shy of what my Leviathan is running me. Uh, spoiler, I don't think that Osirian Dreadnought is probably 50 points less good than the Leviathan. See where you're coming from that. But the, the hope is, uh, since they can't dive directly into close combat, since they don't have a Charybdis, uh, hopefully I can get some things together and get a playtest on them sometime here in August, uh, in advance of the last week of September, first week of October. Um, uh, Michigan GT. Um, as, uh, as we've taken all that in stride, um, I, I suppose it's worth, uh, just before we, like, talk about what we've missed from Games Workshop, uh, in light of their silence on things like Rada or FAQ, um, mentioning that is it worth considering going the opposite direction, and if you take Fury of the Ancients, say, oh, you can include one Dreadnought unit choice for each non-Dreadnought unit choice you take. Yes, that will let people take three in a Talon. Yes, it could be too much, but this is something that we could do. You can try to mitigate in list check, uh, and then uh, allowing Armored Breakthrough to have their Predator score. Tactical Squad, Rhino. Tactical Squad, Rhino. Now I can have four Dreads? I, I'm, just, I'm just fishing for, are there ways to tackle the problem from a positive direction rather from attacking the dread list. I can agree there. Um, I think the best way, man, I don't really know, honestly. I think it's something we as a community kind of need to have clear heads and a kind of consensus as a community for event organizers to address, either on their own or kind of have a suggestion as a whole or come up with one from the community itself and see what EOs think about it when they select and start doing their own events. I mean, I, I've I, got a, I got a suggestion for the community. I, I got one. It's not going to be popular, though. Remember, hobby positivity. Okay. It, it'll be very positive for the community, though. Oh, please they tell me the suggestion they, is go touch grass. They need to release an FAQ and an errata. There needs to be an errata. Yep. I'm very sorry. I, I love the heresy community, right? This is the only community I interact with on a daily basis. I paint models. I build terrain for one event a year. It's the only community I really care about when it comes to miniature wargaming. There needs to be an errata. We are missing something vital. And it really sucks 
because this game is great. It just needs those teeny tiny little tweaks that were obviously kind of missed or didn't get thought about. And as somebody who's been a playtester before, it happens. Okay, That's why a lot of the hyper-competitive games have day one erratas. This isn't hyper-competitive, but some things obviously got missed. It would be nice to have that errata. Because otherwise, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go, okay, you're the EO for Michigan GT. What did you do? Awesome. Did it work? Great. Now, how do you get that data from the Michigan GT EO to all of the other EOs and get them to give their feedback too? Now you have to create a community of EOs across, let's just say the U.S., to garner feedback, to export feedback, and allow it to be imported. It would be the greatest thing of all time. Well, and who knows? Um, Maybe it would help yeah. with an errata. But it's it's still the case where like that is a lot of community legwork, and yep. uh, we have seen before where a uh, small community FAQ ends up driving a divisive wedge between different different areas. We didn't see that necessarily in first edition heresy, at least not with the, the groups that I was fortunate enough to play with. Um, but I, I did hear of, uh, and, and obviously like we, we can be aware as adults that like Mordeval is pretty divisive. You definitely have some people who, who are not lockstep with the way that that content's been, uh, created and distributed. Well, basically if it doesn't come from GW, someone's not going to like it. And then you get people that realize that Mournival was fixing the things that they liked that were broken. Therefore, they hate Mournival. So, you know, you're always going to get somebody that doesn't like anything you if it's not. Aired. Either way, I I enjoyed Mournival. Most people that I interacted with seemed to think that Mournival was okay in some ways. And in any way, they didn't like it. They were okay with the things that they did like enough to try the things they didn't like. Mournival so, was in use at a lot of large events in 1.0 at the true. end. Yep. And it brought some some interesting points of balance so that's that's all i'll say i personally liked Mournival in some yeah. aspects in other aspects parts of it i thought were kind of wonky but i liked some how they addressed uh certain concerns that a lot of the community had that said it was certainly divisive I I was uh, I was not an advocate for for Mournable. Uh I was so disheartened by what I saw with regard to the the amount of content that had been added to the game and seeing other like more fundamental lower level issues like how the psychic phase worked just get completely ignored. Um, that that was that was really baffling to me, and and that kind of dissonance made it difficult for me to give the system a fair shake. Yeah, I think that's a fair statement. Um, yeah. Like I said, yeah, there I were parts that, that I liked. The Mortal ethos, though, was to add things, but to not retract things. Yeah, uh, I did not really like some of their points adjustments. I thought those were a bit odd um, because trying to tell people that hey, these are the points we suggest you add to your list. Versus the actual official list, where you're going to build a list built to the actual game itself with the official points values, and then all of a sudden, here's these not native points values adjustments made it feel kind of do this, but do this instead. It just kind of some of those felt... points adjustments didn't feel bad though. No, they didn't, some but they also did, weren't universally followed. Them, this is very true. Uh, I feel it would have been better as a whole in some ways if we had had it done properly if that makes any sense completely agree and that's why again to be very positive about it because i am i really wish they would be read that's what you i know, wish. Aaron, I, I will back you up i'm positive that there needs to be one yeah i mean yeah. and i know it's corny but i'm positive that there needs to be some errata sometime soon because we're starting to get into like the time of events yeah, you know we're we're starting to get into well established time for events. Music City Heresy's been around for a while. Michigan GT's been around for a while. We're gonna Nova. start getting into time for Nova, Adepticon, LVO. We're gonna start getting into some big event times. It it's gonna be interesting to see how other EOs kind of go with this. You know, I know, I know. Uh, is it Music City or is it Michigan GT that's doing? list submissions. Uh, I know Michigan is doing it for sure. Michigan is. I haven't heard anything from Music City. Okay. Uh, I would 
I haven't heard from anything from Music City either. I think they're I, doing list vetting on site. I would be very interested to see how they handle Fury of the Ancients. And and what and maybe I've missed it. I I've it's been a really long week. Maybe I haven't seen it. I would love to see how they're handling Fury of the Ancients. But have you seen how they're doing the whole entire thing, which I really like? Like, let me state that. I like how they're handling all of it. It is Saturday. They're going to have three rounds of basically any amount of points that you want, depending on what people get done and don't get done before, before the games on that Saturday. So you're going to have 1,000-point games right next to 3,000 points. That's awesome. So so I, 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 I think this will be a great source of data or the inner workings of stuff. But as far as like running a tournament, I don't think we're going to pull a lot of information from that as of how free they're going to make it, which is a good thing. I mean, that is, that's, that's the nature of the game, though. It should be that way. Yeah. And I say that as someone who's altering the nature of the game. Or you don't alter it further? No. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I don't alter it further. That, that's reasonable. That's reasonable. <laughs> Jack's dying over there in the corner. Keep it up, and I'll add the custode stuff that I've got leaked. No, we don't want leaks. We don't want custodes right now. We want to focus on what we have and have that addressed first. And realistically, having a time frame of about 60 to 90 days post-initial release for the first FAC or first errata for the Libras that we have right now to be released, I think that would actually be a good point for it. And then about 60 or 90 after each individual release, like for the uh, various armies of, of humans, um, Mechanicum, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I think that'd be a good way of doing it. It's a little I bizarre agree. to me because I don't feel like 40k goes that long without FAQ and Errata, and I don't think Age of Sigmar does either. Um, and well, but this is a special, I, I, see, I see Heresy more as a specialist. If you look at sure. Necromunda and Titanicus, Titanicus, they'll drop a, an FAQ when a book drops, but it'll be for the last book. So, like, you've got you've got almost three to four months waiting time. Yeah, you also have to look at you have to look at the player bases. Unfortunately, I mean, you have to look at it from a different point of view. You have to look at the player bases and how they consume that content and what their events normally consist of for 40k and AOS. If you look at AOS in Texas, it's a juggernaut. Some of the top players in the world are here in Texas, and they'll beat the snot out of you at a games workshop store ten miles down the road. They consume yeah, and- it. In a big way, and it's a it's a money thing down here. They host big events. Their price support's thick. They and do forty k is the juggernaut for James Workshop as a whole. That's why, I mean, as a worldwide, it's a worldwide thing. Um, yeah. Heresy's not the big player on the block. It's uh, it may be it to us because this is what we focus on. This is the hobby we all have and and share and love. But it's not the be all end all for James Workshop and. The fact that we have Robin Crudis and Andy Hoare working on it, and apparently Andy Hoare has been open to receiving some comments and questions and maybe working on a FAC or a RATA, I'm not quite certain on that, is kind of a positive thing. I mean, we don't have Anuj anymore to individually address every single concern we all have, as he would likely have been doing. And uh, God bless our past uh, friend, we don't have him around anymore to uh, sit there and make it utterly his baby and focus every single bit of work into it. I mean, we're, we're lucky at this point that we have 2.0 and let's just hope for more positive reinforcement from games workshop going forward I rather think, than just becoming kind of a forgotten stepchild. I think like balance complaints, notwithstanding, I think that that's probably uh, the most sobering take I've got so far is that uh, I was really hoping with the allocation of additional resources and funds and store space um, that it was not going to continue to be the way it was. Uh, And while fortunately we are seeing uh, a steady stream of plastics and, and even new product being introduced, and that's to me, nice after kind of the last two or three years minimum of, of kind of a drought status. Um, yeah, it it definitely uh, gives me... Well, we'll just have to hope. I mean, on the assumption, generally this information is correct, right? On the assumption that it is correct, that they are open to a fact and they're open to an errata, I hope we get one. 
Uh, I hope we do, and I think it'll be a great thing for the game. And I would love to see some some addresses, some issues to be addressed. And until then, I'm going to play great games with the guys that I play with. I'm going to run good events. I have no problem. For future reference, any EO that wants to talk about Warzone and what we did for balance changes and what that data represents, all you have to do is ask. I will give it to you. I'll give you my missions, too. I'll give you my missions. I'll give you my table layouts. I'll give you my prize support vendors. I will do anything I can do to help your event be cool. Yeah, yeah. Here, I wanna, I wanna back your play there, and and absolutely open the door the same way. Uh, if yeah. if you have a question about how to run an event, how to get something off the ground in your store, uh, message us on our Facebook page. Mm -hmm. uh, message us uh, through through our email for the podcast. Please reach out to us, uh, myself or or any of the other guys who have been uh, in our group chat, who have been on the show, who have run events, are more than happy to do our utmost to help you run the best event you can run. I'll give you everything I've got. I'll give you all of it. Speaking as a lore nerd, uh, I'll be happy to help you come up with background for stuff for missions. I'll be happy to come up with anything you want me to come up with or help with. Um, the hobby is what we all enjoy, what we all love. We're here to help. We're not here to be exclusionary. We want the hobby to succeed and grow and thrive because this is what we love. I give you the price support out of the closet, baby. If it helps your event grow and your event helps my event because every event helps other events, right? It's going to be great. I met John Christensen and Lucas at an event at Atomic Hobby Shop. We were playing Zone Mortalis. A year later, basically, I meet him at Warzone, and it's just grown from there. Mm -hmm. John helped a ton with Shaft. John helped a ton with Road to Soul. John came and gave prize support at Road to Soul. You better well bet if it becomes within my power that I can drive to Dallas, I'm going to take some cool stuff up there and hand it out if he runs an event. I'll do it. I, w I will always make that play. If you need help with price support and you need help finding a way to make it happen or grow a community, I'll help you. But you got to put in the time because that's what it is. It is a time investment, but it will be the most rewarding investment you can make if you stick to it. On the subject of what we do have, though, we do have uh, about the last two weeks of articles and releases to go over. Uh, that leaves us with um, uh, the first of those being uh, the Vengeful Spirit event, uh, Exemplary Battle. Uh, got some Space Wolves versus Sons of Horus action here. Um, anybody thumb through this? Anybody have strong uh, opinions on the units when, uh, within? you have to give me a moment because I'm trying to pull it back up right now out of my, my folder for... Yeah, I'll grab I have it saved on my... Uh, so, everything. Uh, Space Wolves got the Jorland Hunter Pact. I'm, uh, I'm sure that's probably Jorland or... Uh, I Like, they've written it down here, but I'm sure, like, that's in medical speak, uh, and it's probably more designed to be... Probably <laughs> Yeah, something like that. Uh, they are 125 points up front. They are a troop choice, but they do not have line. Each model has a hand flamer and chain sword, as well as frag and crack grenades and power arm. Uh, they do have the standard tactical marine stat line, including lead 7 base, lead 8 on the sergeant, 1 attack base, 2 on the sergeant. Uh, they net, under special rules, Crusader, Scout. Uh, they are a support squad. Uh, and they have Scouring Tempest, where once per battle, during the shooting phase, uh, specifically during your active shooting phase, not reactive, uh, the controlling player may uh, choose to give uh, all the flame weapons pinning and torrent three inches. Um, a little weird, but hey, cool, if you can walk right up on top of the enemy your next couple rows of guys because i think these these uh exemplary battles are still written with the goal of being like zone mortalis uh your once per game you can have your second and third rank of guy get to throw their flame templates for and kind of even out their hits neat yeah it, it, it's tolerable yeah they're they're nothing special uh them not having scoring is kind of a letdown but is what that is uh especially given that they're Space Wolves, and they, they do get some pretty potent rules that I could imagine would be very strong in Zone Mortalis. 
Uh, and then we do have a relative winner as far as the Chieftain squad. Now, that squad, I am... Yeah, that's a winner. That That's definitely one I'm going to be building for myself, for my Sons of Horus. It's... It's like a Reaver a Command solid squad. solid winner. Yes, it really is. So, uh, they start at the same 125 points. Uh, four Chieftains and a Standard Bearer. They're an HQ choice, though they can be taken as a retinue. Uh, each model comes with just power armor, but you can buy the whole unit. Artificer armor will get there. Uh, bolt Pistol Chainsword, Frag Crack Grenades, Boarding Shield, which is interesting. Uh, that, therefore, because they have that Boarding Shield, it does make them heavy. Uh, they are Weapons 5, 2 Wounds, 2 Attacks. Uh, lead 8 base. Uh, they have Chieftain Retinue, Chosen Warriors. Uh, Chosen Warriors, for those unaware, means that each model may issue and accept challenges as if they were a character. Uh, they also have Kingslayers and Relentless. Uh, you can buy 5 extra Chieftains, 20 points a model. Anybody can replace their Chainsword with a Chain Axe at 2 points per model. Uh, I can see Duncan Kendall just salivating as I've said the word Chain Axe. Uh, 10 point power weapon or 15 point power fist. I think the power fist is a little expensive here, but certainly not the end of the world. Uh, the entire unit may gain artificer armor at 5 points per model. Jeez Louise. Oh, um, yeah. Damn good unit. Damn good unit. Very solidly built. Solid rules. And in my honest opinion, given this was the first of the uh, stuff to drop post. Second edition Heresy. I think it's the best built of them currently. Uh, the other ones... We did get I the think... uh, Word Bearer Apothecary built-in unit. You're right. My bad. And they're not bad, but I think the Chieftain squad is leaps and bounds above them. Yeah. Or, or at least you are more likely to see these played. I could see Word Bearers playing the Apothecary unit, but they're so weird. They're so they weird. They are. Um, they out of place. Yeah, just a little bit. And, and I see that, and I know that they're from a very specific place and a very specific part of the timeline and a very specific book. And it makes a lot of sense and it's super cool, but it's odd. Like it's an odd unit. Um, and then uh, just to, to touch on, uh, Chieftain Retinue describes how you can take these guys as a retinue. Kingslayers. I think Kingslayers is... Uh, no, uh, Space Wolf Varigir Terminators have the Lord's Bane special, which is not the same as Kingslayers. Kingslayers, when any models with this special rule are used to bank melee attacks against enemy units that contain independent characters or Primarchs, all failed to hit rolls of one may be re-rolled. When a model with this special rule is engaged in a challenge and is used to make melee attacks against independent characters with the Primarch unit type, all failed hit rolls may be. So knowing that you're going to be fishing to hit on fives and sixes against Primarchs, you therefore get to twin link your melee attack. Uh, and that Kingslayer's rule is probably reason enough to tuck one or two power fists into the squad. I think something else that kind of needs to be addressed on this squad, and it's definitely kind of unique. Um, also, with the uh, Yorland Hunter pack, neither one of them can get a dedicated transport. Yeah, definitely constructed for Zone Mortalis in that context. Wait, no, no, no. Yorland Hunter pack, dedicated transport. Uh, oh, a rhino, rhino termite, or Proteus. You're right. I did not see that in there. Ooh, termite's spicy. But the chieftains definitely cannot which I think definitely makes them, yes, more inclined to be dedicated to uh, Zone Mortalis. Oh, yeah. Or just the guys you stuff in the Land Raider. Yeah. I, I feel like this is a very, like, thematically, this is a really good, this is a really good hit. Um, and there, we have a mission that kind of, kind of goes around this, marking doors and stuff like that, you know, an advance party so that the wolf can make his strike. I think this kind of stuff is great. I like seeing this kind of stuff. And, and yeah, Yorland Hunters, they're they're not the best, but it's okay. The model's super, like, the theme for that unit is super cool. I like it. Yeah, very exciting. Uh, likewise, we did also get a preview for uh, a new Emperor's Children Predator. Um, the one where you think everything's hunky-dory, and then you find they put a bare-headed model in there, and then you're like, oh, that's terrifying. That's why he has, has a helmet. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, yeah. 
other big standout to me is that uh, apparently they are really wanting to push the uh, dueling gauntlets for uh, for the Emperor's children, uh, because this Praetor has the same gloves that uh, Lucius and uh, Sol Tarvitz both got. I don't think Eidolon got them, uh, but but definitely those those last three models now have. I'm not sure if he did or not. I'll find out, though. Plus, you know, uh, this guy's out here with that uh, fist bump, kiss the ring type pose, which is really, really cool. No, Eidolon's got full gauntlets. Oh, does he have Team. the... Does he have the traditional ones, or or like these gloves? No, he he doesn't have the the gloves. He's got like like full ceramite gauntlets. Yeah, so that's that's almost the case where they've they've kind of changed their style guide for Emperor's Children. Definitely want you to be able to take one of those fancy gloves off and slap somebody and say, "You sully my honor." It'd be CAD file. It's just copy pasted. <laughs> Certainly possible. Yeah, See, but I uh, like this model a lot for Emperor's yeah. Children. I like I it for the fantastic. Pitch. Yeah, look at I, that, look at that cloak, man. You can put that on anything. Yeah, that cloak is gonna go a lot of places because it's got that gorgeous aquila on it. Uh, likewise, I'm betting if you zip the top knot off this guy, you're gonna see this guy in a lot of uh, Blood Angel armies because all that filigree is gonna work real nicely with the Dawnbreaker aesthetic. Oh, especially especially his uh, his right shoulder. Yeah. Yeah, because you got that that death mask thing going that on. Death face. Yeah, that 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 leads very heavily. Yep. To that. Uh, I I think that's super cool. I think that's exciting that they've really tried to play up those two legions as, as being kind of twisted sides of each other's coins to a certain extent. Um, and I I just love the opportunity it brings up for both of them to steal each other's bits. Yeah, I kind of like that. And uh, my biggest hope out of seeing these models. I'm really hoping that this means that each legion is going to get a praetor for their legion. Don't give me that. Seems hope. to be seems to be heading that way because I think we've gotten a contemptor for every legion, and I know that they are seemingly working backwards through uh, the Leviathans. Uh, and likewise, we also seem to be getting uh, the heads and uh, I'm sorry, the shoulders and torsos re-released. Uh, now, admittedly, all the shoulders we're getting are Mark 6s to go with new plastics, uh, but the torso re-releases are what Forge World used to produce uh, so that you can drop those onto older Marines. And then the, the heads and shoulders, obviously shoulders, you can still use regardless of underlying armor mark, uh, but the, the heads were definitely getting Mark 6 or pseudo Mark 6 upgrade. Uh, heads for for all armies so that you can drop those onto the plastic kits as well. Didn't they drop? Wasn't it today that they dropped the an Dark Angel heads? Set? Yeah. Well, they they dropped some upgrade sets that were Mark II and Mark III. I thought maybe uh, I'm Mark II for White Scars and Mark III for Emperor's Children. Whatever the Emperor's Children torso mark used to be, it might be four. We got we got Mark VI pads. Or Mark IV pads for the White Scars as well today. Yeah, Mark IV uh, White Scars pad, Mark III Emperor's Children pads. And and Mark II. Mark IIs are in there too. Yeah, and then the and Emperor's Mark, Children Mark, Mark, Mark IV torsos. Yeah, so we're just getting reissues of those uh, shoulders and torsos. But they're now on a made-to-order basis. Uh, so they're not taking up warehouse space. Um uh, but yeah, still still rolling rolling forward with that. Always positive to see. Hopefully yeah, we that's... can continue to get the Mark IV and Mark III guys restocked so that you can put those torsos on those guys. Um, but still still nice to see see that thread still present. Yeah. Yeah, I would love I need just Mark Threes for Ultramarines, and I need like eighty. So I would I would love to be able to get some. It'll um... happen eventually. And then, of course, our other big release uh, was the Plastic Leviathan and then the uh, Close Combat Weapon Upgrade Spur. if you bought a Forge World Leviathan. Uh, what's everybody think on this kit? I, I like today. it. I think they're pretty cool. I yeah. had to go with a third Leviathan, but I think it'll be a little bit better when we get the weapons. I like the fact that the sprues are broken up so you can buy the weapons separately um, and that you get the option of building either claw twice. 
or is she pulls yeah. you up, you'd be like, you get one, that's it. Yeah. Definitely, I think, brings the cost down on uh, on fitting or equipping a Leviathan if you bought one of those Legion-specific ones, or if you had a, had a resin kit lying around, uh, which to me is very cool. Um, likewise, uh, by having uh, plastic instead of resin, uh, those tubes that run between like the back of the shoulder and the wrist, uh, those might be a little more malleable. I had a lot of trouble with my resin ones, and I know a lot of other people have had issues, and plastic just might be a little more pliable, easier to work with. I have seven uh, Leviathans here, three built, uh, four not built, all of them are resin, and uh, I really want to get one of these plastic kits at whole so I can see how much easier they are. Because if they're easier, I'll just sell off my remaining resin ones that I haven't built yet and get more. I that was way. fortunate. I felt like my resin kits came together. Um, Never had an issue with a resin Leviathan before. I haven't either, but I want to see how much easier, or if it is easier, or convertible oh, for, uh, yeah. for the resin, for the plastic versus the resin. Because the resin, let's all be honest here, um, unless you sit there and do a lot of cutting, a lot of pasting, and a lot of fiddling, you're going to get kind of a mono pose or very slight variation on. But if this plastic is more more very more uh pleasant for converting and adjusting i think it'd be more fun that's fair i i think the legs are going to be about as poseable but i didn't have any complaints with the resin legs but that's definitely possible that there there's a greater possibility for range of motion in terms uh especially if those two are more workable i think there's a lot more pieces in this new kit so oh, yeah. you get some you get some mold lines in some interesting places there's there's a couple of things with that kit that are are interesting. It's cool that the kit's in plastic, right? There's a lot of guys who just don't want to mess with the resin because they don't want to sand it, they don't want to have to fix it because mold slips happen. You know, th there's a lot of extra work with resin that people don't going to go with. It this may be their reason to get a plastic leviathan or to get a leviathan out of their army. It it also seems. Of, go ahead. Which is one of the most brutal things you can add to a heresy army at this stage. Leviathans with storm cannons, mm -hmm. rending on five ups, yeah. you can destroy anything in the game with a pack of two Leviathans with storm cannons. Did the uh, As Conrad Curse? Did the storm cannon go to strength eight? No, it's still six seven. No, it's, That's it's, fortunate. Yeah, That's seven. fortunate. So it it can't just no. mulch terminators uh, on site. Um, no, but it I, rends on a five up. Yeah. Oh, I I think it's it's very compelling. I think that the storm cannon is a super great option if you aren't like trying to infiltrate or outflank or drop pod in uh, your leviathan. Also, uh, wanted to uh, shout on behalf of uh, one of our group members. Uh, it seems to be that the additional trim pieces for the shoulders are optional or like the the. Um, main body shoulders, if that makes sense, rather than shoulders. Uh, those kind of brassy trim pieces, those seem to be extra, and you don't seem to have to add those on. Um, and and for some people who really preferred the lines on the original model, uh, finding that out was was a big sigh of relief. Yeah, I thought they were dumb. No, I, I have. I mean, I'm in the I'm in the Duncan crowd. I have two Leviathans finished. I have four more to go. The chances of me finishing all four are real slim at this point because of how oppressive they are. But the next one I will be sculpting Salamander stuff on all over. Like, I'm I'm ready for a Salamander's Leviathan Forge World. I'm ready. Any day now. I'll take it. Yeah, I, I suppose I can't. I can't get too upset because the uh, Thousand Sons already got two Contemptors. So waiting a little longer for a Leviathan is not going to be too bad. That of Siren Contemptor is one of the most visually appealing models, I think. It's fantastic. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. I've got one sitting over there on my daughter's desk right now. It's gorgeous. The only thing prettier than that Dreadnought is that Dreadnought standing next to that Dreadnought. Yeah. Uh, did we uh, did we have any final notes, or uh, do we feel like we've covered everything that we had in the last week? Uh, definitely caught up on our hobby progress. Uh, lamented the absence of an FAQ, but did commit as event organizers to helping uh, lift up, build up, and equip other event organizers to make sure they can run the best events they're capable of. Um, 
went over the the last two weeks of releases and previews, as well as uh, our exemplary did I, battle. Did I somehow we miss about the... Aer- Aeronautical and Parallels, blah, 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 Horse Heresy? I did not. That is a game that is outside my wheelhouse. So uh, if some of you guys have played Aeronautica or are now considering playing it, uh, give me the details. Spill the beans. Well, it's outside of my wheelhouse, too. It's just something that came across. I personally would probably buy the book just for the pretty pretty, pretty pictures because I don't know how to read. Um, I but yeah, that's a large Imperial Navy because I figured this was going to happen or we were going to force it, which was the original accountability buddies plan before 2.0 dropped. Um, and then Mornival did their own as kind of a stopgap, but now so this is out. Um, if you look at all the plastic releases, it was kind of on the wall because all the plastic Space Marine planes are all heresy related. They're not 40K at all. So it's definitely a good thing to happen. I mean, you can do the magical quad scale game where you started doing orbital interdiction with your planes that paved the way for your Titans to come in that blow up stuff so that way your Marines can infiltrate into a ZM, which leads to a giant apocalypse game. So you've got all the scales of heresy. I think it actually really fits for heresy. I mean, the heresy was not a small scale game battle. I mean, it was yeah. not a series of small scale battles. It was the biggest event in the Imperium as a whole. Yeah, and it still it, is. It sets the stage for all of 40K and everything that that encompasses. And I love the fact that we have the entire size of everything all summed together for the Aeronautica Imperialis, um, the, uh, the 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 Titan Maniple fights, um, the Night Maniple fights, everything, and and Zone Mortalis all the way down to there. Um, the only thing I want, I really want to push Games Workshop and hope Games Workshop puts out is Battlefleet Heresy. If they put out an official version of that, I would I would be a crazily happy Duncan because that just takes everything to the next step. And you, you could combine all of those into one giant circular event over like a week or a month or a year or a series of events. And it could just be awesome and all encompassing and bring in people from all across the parts of the hobby. And it just be so cool and fun. You could refight the entire heresy from Istvan all the way to Terra. And I, I love that idea. Well, uh, here's hoping that with Gen Con coming up this week, I might get the chance to uh, get a demo game in for uh, Aeronautica. I know that uh, there has been a, a, a hole in my life ever since Star Wars Armada left, um, but I do also know, conversely, that uh, uh, Titanicus did not draw me in the same way that Battletech did. Now, some of that's obviously because I've got a 20-plus year history with Battletech at this point, but... Kind of hard not to. I mean, it's it's been around for so long there's and it's been through so many different stages so many people have crossed paths with it it's kind of hard not to have a history with it at this point if you're one of the gamers of our generation and yeah. titanic is a hell of an investment to get started that's one of the biggest problems i have with it is yeah. it's it's like old heresy was like if you want to play knights you're looking at one of the most expensive armies you've ever had if you want to play normal i mean you can buy the starter sets if they're still available they keep going in and out of stock oh, but the grand you, master set was beautiful I mean, it, it was, was just terrible for gameplay. Wonderful. Like, it gave you most of what you would want to build, like, a really decent force once you added some other stuff. Yeah, but, but it you couldn't last. It was, ter- it was terrible for gameplay. The, the new starter sets with a Warlord and a Reaver and a pair of Hounds is better for building maniples off of. And significantly true. cheaper. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Holy cow. Yeah, I, I go and I look this stuff up and I'm like, oh, cool. How much are two Warhounds? $70. A Warmaster, $170. A Warlord, $112. And I'm just like, ah, right. Once again, another reason why I decided to play Battletech is because, uh, unfortunately, like, do I wish their plastics were nicer? Yes, but when it's a $5 model... It's a whole lot easier to just like buy an entire range and an entire faction's worth of stuff and, and to have greater flexibility in our- Yeah, that's the biggest that's what's kind of been the problem with me in Titanicus is whenever something else drops, I want to be able to run the maniples of it. And you know, well, this is just me my problem in general when I want to run the capabilities of everything. So I was painting, you know, five warlords and five reavers and it just got taxing and expensive. It helped that I was, you know, won a few of them through contests but yeah it's just pricey a- at is it's pricey to get into it, it's rewarding i mean the gameplay looks fun i've never yeah. had a chance to really play it myself i mean it looks amazing yeah but. i enjoy it it's probably one of the better quicker gw games as far as 
uh, engagement goes fairly quick to pick up. It's it's been here in specifically in Houston. It's been hard to get started. Um, you know, there's some guys who play it, and there's some guys who have a lot of it, but it's been tough to get it kicked off and going. And in in a city as big as we are, it's it's been odd that we can't seem to keep a league going for more than one or two days. And I don't know if that's because stores just can't keep it in stock because it's it's not an item that's easy for a store to stock. In most cases, it's a it is almost all of it is either mail order or just the new stuff is not. So it can be tough. I mean, it's an investment for the stores to carry, and it's a that's a tough one. Yeah, but it's really cool. Supposedly, uh, some of the Victoria boys are going to bring up a demo table for Warzone and do some some After Dark Titanicus stuff, which will be amazing. Yeah, I wouldn't be against that. I'll bring up most of my guys as well. My yeah. fight. I foisted all my, my AT terrain off on Mr. McGarity, so I know he's got enough for at least two tables. I've already got one built and painted, and then I've got the parts for probably four more. Well, we might have to make that happen then. I might have to make that your baby for this year. You know, I'm painting jet bikes right now. I've got, I've actually painted, I'm on the 20th one right now during this whole recording session. Yeah, don't worry about those jet bikes. You don't need those jet bikes. <laughs> you don't need those jet bikes. Don't worry about that. You know what? I'll probably say that after I play three or four games of them. You'd be selling me some of those jet bikes by the time you play three or four games of them. Mike, you want to buy some jet bikes? Of course. I've got your, your best thing, though. I've got some a great deal on some attack bikes. Do you? It's mighty that, nice. Uh, of that hurts right in the fields. I've got <laughs> six over there built. That hurts. That hurts. Jack, how many of those do you have built? Attack bikes? Yeah. Um, luckily only six. Holy um, six. I did 15, so. Oh my goodness. I mean, this is how you can tell that we're, we're heresy, a dedicated crew. Uh, we have the weird units built up for no reason at all, other than because we like them and we can. I mean, yeah. I mean, Reavers with jump packs are over there. Um, They're cool. Close combat iron warriors over there. It's what it is. Yep, and we're starting to ramble, so that means it's time to close it. Indeed. Good segue. Yeah. So, uh, once again, I have been Jacob, and this episode I've been joined by... The Duncan. John. The Jack. John. Mike. And we're glad to have you with us, listeners. Remember, stay accountable to your hobby and to your buddies, and we'll see you here next time. <laughs>